Good day, good day. Okay, this is the core support, radiator support. I still haven't put the header panel on. I'm getting further, as you can see. I got all the front end together. I'm just now putting in, spent some time wire brushing the lines here to clean off crap on condenser, radiator, wiped a little bit down. I'm, I'm not spending a lot of time on everything. I like that power box and the, you know, coolant bottle and the squirter bottle and stuff to get them like new looking. I'm doing quite a bit. I mean, the battery tray I spent a good half hour on, but some things I am spray painting. Uh, some things mostly I'm just, I'm not doing a lot of black spray painting. The fuel in injector rail is really the only thing I think I painted black. Everything else I've taken out of Hippo, which is now outside. I got my WJ back in here. Um, got everything I think out of it. But there are going to be some differences. Just like if I'm going to use this one because it has the sticker still and aren't burned off. This indicates 93. Well, this is a 95 Jeep. I'm running into some other things based on the options package of these two Jeeps. Because Burn Victim here, and I'm not still not sure I'm going to change the hood. Burn Victim here has the overhead console with a compass, you know, temp outdoor temperature, stuff like that. And, uh, let's set this down right here. One thing, running the harness, I come to realize, I've got the outdoor outside temperature sensor here that screws down on the plastic part of the front grill out here. This harness didn't have that because Hippo only had just dome lights. Just dumb dome, dumb dumb dome lights. Didn't have the logic center with the compass and you know trip meter and miles per gallon and outdoor temperature and all that stuff. So uh, I have been able to find full schematics PDF on these Jeeps. Um, I am currently hunting and I found a few places. It looks like where I found in schematics that the outdoor ambient temperature sensor uh, goes to the you know the HVAC controller, the climate controller. And so I might have to tap into some wires or get some pins or something and get into the back of that if that's where that plug goes. I've still got some more tracing to find. I have not decided to put a fuel pump in it since I had it all apart. Um, because this only has 136000 on it and I am it's winter time. And uh, my business is more kind of idle in the winter so I'm a little bit tighter on money. I really wish I would have used this pulley here out of Hippo. It looks better than this. This was the original one. I cleaned up, brushed it, and got all the fire extinguisher and burn stuff off it. And then I saw the other pulley. I was like, oh, hell, I should have used that one. But I already put it together and put the serpentine on. As well, comparing, when I do have good parts still left from Burn Victim here, I have compared uh, what I took off Hippo with what was in here. And Hippo had 293, almost 300,000 miles. This only has 136,000. So I'm sure the engine is healthier. But I'm telling you, I'm reusing the uh, condenser for the air conditioner from Hippo because my other one out of this Jeep, and I'm sure it didn't work. You see that wetness? That dark area of this condenser? That typically means that you have a you have an a AC leak. So I bet it's air conditioning didn't work. This condenser actually looks better for 300,000 miles. I don't know if Hippo had air conditioning. I never saw it running. I tried to cap the lines with you know, fingertips off of these nitro gloves I, I cut off to put over lines to protect them from debris getting in there. You know, you want AC system stuff to stay as clean as possible. It's not quite like a heater core can pass some junk. AC systems need to be very clean. And I do want to get on a fuse box cap because like I said, this one's hinges pieces that should hook under here and lift this way. Uh, are broken off, so I'll be sourcing another one of them out of the junkyard. So, as well, the bottle from Hippo did not have the coolant level sensor. I'm going to have to pick one of those up. I'm going to try and get some of this stuff out of the junkyard. I have the plug to it, which is odd, because this is the harness from Hippo. But, I think it just goes to the Vic vehicle information center underneath the dash and really doesn't mean anything. I My 93 Limited, I took the Vic out because it was screwed up and causing electrical problems. So I've actually found a ZJ at a pull, and pull aparts type of place in Arizona that had the pocket in the dash 
instead of the right below the climate controller, instead of the VIC, and even the basic VIC, like these four-wheels have with just showing four-wheel four drive indication. Some of the harnesses made separate, some has made the same, I think, um, to, to wire for things, that even if they're not going to put it in. I was able to find the grommets for the breather. Those are getting harder to find, the PCV and stuff, but I was able to find brand new ones. Uh, I was, I came to realize I could use my, reuse my uh, ABS controller, or pump. Cleaned it all up real good, because I can clean it. Put it in, but I, and I, I, I've got the check valve for the vacuum booster, and I ran a, a hose down there to the manifold. But I have this extra plug right here. I need to set this down so I'm not trying to carry things in. This goes to that throttle position sensor. Throttle position is what that is, that cylinder coming out of the Hippo's older style vacuum booster. This plugs into. And I think our Ellie's has that, I know, too, because I remember leaving that out one time and she had an ABS light on. I think it was ABS or maybe it was brake light, I can't remember. But I remember I checked on the hood and found I did leave something unplugged, plugged that in, and the light went out. Still got to get a brake... <coughs> cylinder reservoir for brake fluid um, which this Jeep has disc brakes so I need the single cap that means this is going to have the proportioning valve and everything in this Jeep for rear disc brakes so I have to have the proper reservoir um, what's funny is I just went over there and I looked at at uh, Roki 2 his tranny cooler on the V8s, it's on this side. The 6s, it's on this side. There's quite a bit of difference. These lines are different. So this line comes around the radiator and condenser and comes over to here. So this goes here. And pff, darn, I wish I would have took snapshots. This is why it's a good idea. But I had a burn victim vehicle. Everything was toast. Everything was melted down. It was a disaster. You saw the pre-pictures if you've been following this. Um, so, again, it's always smart to take pictures of something before you disassemble it. So you can remember how it goes back together if you haven't done it in a while. I've uh, looks like I got another bolt that goes into the. No, there's the bolt right there. Well, that's interesting. I've got an extra bolt hole on this bracket to the power steering pump. Well, that's interesting. Huh? Well, don't look like anything goes there. There's a hole right next to it. You can see the bolt down through the holes for the front. There's nothing bolting it to the back. It's just an ex extra hole. Maybe they use the same bracket for the 2.5 or something. I don't know. I have never seen that 2.5 four cylinder ZJ. So I have no idea. Maybe they use some of the same brackets. So anyway, I've hooked up jumper cables. I uh, just clamped onto the hot and black and I got one of my big semi truck batteries there. Uh, this is another concern of mine is the interior dome lights under the dash come on when I hook up the, hook up the uh, battery and they're not going off. So I'm hoping I'm not going to have harness issues that it was between 93 to 95, there's such differences it's going to cause me problems. I might have to rewire a lot of things, more than just the ambient temperature to read on the overhead console. Um, it works. I got a lot more of the... Yesterday, yesterday I, I got quite a bit done. I got a lot of this dash put back together. But then we'll check my... I polished the plastic on the gauge set because it was kind of scratched, scarred up a little bit looking. looks a lot better now. Uh, it's coming together. Still got a lot of dash to put back together once I'm done. I want to see it start before I put everything together, though. Um, but uh, I could crank it. I've got the distributor in. I put the distributor in yesterday. I did take it out of Hippo. In 95, they did do a different rotor cap. Uh, it's got a larger diameter and has a slot down the middle. That is a smaller diameter shaft coming up out. But I'm like, heck, it's a distributor. It should work. From what I'm finding, too, on the later cam sensors it's the plate it goes right underneath the the cab distributor cap those are getting hard to find the only way i'm finding them i can find them at rock or autozone or anybody the only way i'm finding them is if you buy a whole entire refurb um distributor it's like they want you to buy a whole nother distributor to be able to get that dang cam sensor and that really sucks gonna put some split tubing on a lot of this loose wiring yesterday i got underneath today yesterday was a really dirty day for me and i hooked up all the tranny cabling all the plugs to the tranny kick down cable you know this puppy going down and i got so much done i rotate the motor till i'm on the timing mark distributor is either 
on the money or it's 180 degrees out. So we'll see when I try to start it. But I'm getting close. I'm getting close to when I try and start it. And it's burn victim. Working on it still. But I've got through Christmas. I haven't done a lot of work now, really in the last couple weeks. 